and hello YouTube, this is GS Man Smart, and I'm sitting on a brand new video for tutorials GS. In today's tutorial, we'll be taking a look at Photoshop and how to render out or cut out an image. Uh, funnily enough, when I was thinking of doing this tutorial, I was actually looking back at some of my older videos that I did on my original channel, GS Man Smart. And I gotta tell you, like six years ago, I was doing a tutorial on GIMP, which is a very similar program to Photoshop. And I was looking at my old video on how to render out and cut out images in GIMP. <laughs> Jesus, I was on the old Windows XP. If you want to check that video out, just for 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 a good laugh or you know for some entertainment, I'll leave a link on the screen in the, in the description. But today we're going to show you how to render out an image. And basically, what rendering out means is just taking the background out from uh, from a character or from an object. Now you only want that specific object or character in the image, and just not have the background. Say you want to use that render for another background. That's what I'm going to be showing you how to do today. And there are several ways of doing this, but I'll show you the best ways to do it on Photoshop and the most easiest way to do it. So first of all, uh, the easiest way to render out is if you happen to have a solid color background, whether it be black, whether it be green, whether it be white, whether it be something like this. If you have a solid color background, it's very easy to render out because all we have to do is grab our magic wand tool here. And all we got to do is just select the green here. And then we go up to, well, we press Control X and that's it. Press Control X. You can also go up to edit and press cut. And that automatically takes out the background. Now you can zoom in here and you know take out these pieces right here. You can use your eraser to go a little more detailed in and take these out. The magic wand tool is a really powerful tool and it works exceptionally well. So definitely recommend you to take advantage of it when you want to render stuff out. And would you look at that, there's our render, very easy. Now, if you don't happen to be so fortunate and you don't have a solid color background, say you have something like this, where we have Vivi from Final Fantasy IX, there's no solid color background. If you notice, if we use the magic wand tool, it doesn't really do that good of a job. Now, you can still use this method. Uh, you can still try the magic wand tool, but as you see, similar colors will start to, similar colors will start to be cut out as well. Uh, because the magic wand tool will mistake the colors at the bottom here for the shoes as well so that's why it's not really good to use that but for this you want to use the pen tool and your pen tool is right here next to the uh, type tool so go ahead and press over here and then what we're gonna do is just zoom in to the picture and then all we're gonna do is just start making uh, selections here now, when you have curves like that, you can always create another dot in the middle, hold down another dot in the middle. You can adjust the curve like so. But essentially all we're doing is just going around the character here with the pen tool. Uh, if you happen to have less complex characters that don't have that many jagged edges, it's very easy to do. But we're just going around with our pen tool here. And you don't need to be exact because what will happen is we can just create another dot here in the center and then adjust it like so. So you can literally go, you know, every, every few inches you can make another little dot. And just be careful when you're making new dots, make sure you're putting it at the center there and then changing it like that. Doesn't need to be 100% accurate. And we're just going to go all the way down like so. And then we'll make the adjustments like so, like so. As you see, you go too far, it gets kind of, it gets kind of messy. So you don't, you don't want to go too far like I just did there. Uh, you want to go piece by piece, that's the best way to do it. And sometimes this can take a while. But another easy way to do this is if you go on Google, and say you're looking for a cutout version or a render of a character from a video game or, or, a, or a character from a show. Sometimes there will be renders already made for you. So all you really have to do is Google them and there's probably already someone who made a render for it. Uh, that's what I would recommend doing as well because it is very uh, easy and useful. And you won't need to do all of this. But if it's like something no one's ever done, you'll probably have to do this yourself. Uh, the other way you can also do this is with the uh, selection tool, with the quick selection tool. And I'll go over that in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and speed this portion of the video up. So you guys don't need to watch it all. And hopefully you'll see how this gets done once I finish. Thank you. 
All right, so I just finished now. Be aware, when you get to the very end here, you don't need to make these two connect. Just, uh, you can make them connect or you can make them overlap like so, but it doesn't really make a difference. Um, essentially, though, what you're going to do is create a duplicate of this. As you see here, I've created a duplicate. To make a duplicate of the background, just right-click the background and click uh, Duplicate Layer, and that will give you a second copy of that. Now, in the second copy, what you want to do is right-click here and click create vector mask and what that will do if you take a look it cuts our thing out so very easy to do be aware when you're when you're creating these dots around here remember that you want to hold down control whenever you're moving for for example let me just uh because if you saw in the sped up version i went really quickly the second half way through all this because uh, I was pressing control when I was moving my my points here. So remember to do this. If you have a curve like that, just go ahead and ignore the curve. Go over like that. Make a dot in the middle. Hold down control and then move it like so. That makes it a lot easier than having to just go, you know, dot, 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 dot. You don't want to do that. It takes forever. So just remember, click at the end, in the middle, hold control. And drag it out that makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker so anyway we're gonna duplicate our layer right duplicate then we're gonna right click in the center here create vector mask and that when we hide the uh, original background you'll see we have it cut out now you can notice we still have some small fine edges here like especially near the bottom of the shoes here we still have some of the background here what you can do to clean this up first of all we want to do is right click the layer here then click convert to smart object then after that right click again click rasterize layer now if you want it to be done here you could be done here this is how you do it but what you can also do is right click the picture click select pixels and that will create a selection around then go up to select go to modify go to contract by one pixel and then we can go select inverse edit cut and that will just cut out one pixel around the entire selection so it just cleans it up a little bit you can then uh, deselect and that's kind of how you render that's pretty much it so very easy to do and like i said if you want to do it an easier way if you don't want to do all this stuff you can easily just look up on google the, like the object you're looking for and then type in render or type in dot png and you'll see some renders as well in fact here on google if i were to type in right now vivi from final fantasy 9 and i type in render at the end or if you type in dot png and as you can see there are already some here that are rendered out for us that's rendered out for us you can tell if it's rendered out if you click on it if you see the white background here other times here you'll see that this one has a alpha channel in the background this is clearly rendered out if you see like a transparent background like that that means it's rendered out if it doesn't have that you usually have to use the magic wand tool to select around it but otherwise very easy now the other way you can do this just quickly go over this version of how to do it because i, I want to mention it if you have a picture like this right you can also use the quick selection tool so right here by your by your um where is it by your magic wand tool the quick selection tool you can do something like that where you can start selecting or you can just draw a rough selection around here you just hold down your mouse and just draw like so and as you see it does it does a fairly good job i mean it, it it gets it pretty accurate the only problem is with this one is that if it sees very similar colors you see it does a, it does a pretty nice job at it the only problem is if it, if it does similar colors especially by the hat as you just saw over by the hat and right there it messes up too similar colors like the shoes here and the hat here it messes up but if you have something that stands out a bit more uh, you can definitely use the quick selection tool to just draw over the edges here and it'll select it if you ever want to uh, take something off from selection hold on the alt key and the alt key will then you can just draw once again over like that and you can fix it up but 
Uh, this can take a bit longer, especially for images that have very similar colors. And it can be a bit annoying to have to go fix it up again. But it's definitely an option. And one other option that you do have, since I want to go over all the options real quick, it's the magnetic lasso tool. This can work very well too, especially if you don't like the pen tool. But this one, as you can see, you can basically create a selection around it and it automatically uh, does it for you. But, I mean, it's kind of hard to use for me because, <laughs> look, I'm getting, I'm already screwing everything up. Because you sort of have to be like zoomed out a bit. And um, yeah, it, it, it does work though. If you have a fairly big monitor, it does work because it does automatically select, as you can see, look at this. It does a really good job. And it, does, it doesn't have that many troubles recognizing the colors. And it does really good. So that's one other way you can do it. There are many ways you could do this. Hopefully you understood how you can do it though. And hopefully you're able to do it on your own now. So thank you for watching. Hopefully it was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, if you're confused about something, if something doesn't work for you, go and leave down in the comment section below. I'll definitely down there answering any questions you have. I also have plenty of other Photoshop tutorials on the channel if you want to check that out. Plenty of other software tutorials as well. So if you haven't subscribed yet and you're interested, go ahead and subscribe. And I also have a Patreon. If you enjoyed this video or you enjoyed some other guides, you can always donate a dollar to my Patreon. All you got to do is click on the top right corner. There's a card there and it'll bring you to the page. I also have a gaming channel, a vlogging channel, a music channel, and an advice channel. If you want to check any of that out, links in the description as well as on the end card. And yeah, thank you for watching as always. And this is GS Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.